Welcome to the Brass and Woodwind Shop. This is the fifth video in the Restoring a Bass Trombone series. Last week I got the inner and outer slide tubes apart. That took an entire video to do that because they were in such bad condition. And also in that video I showed you the trombone slide mandrels. And I'm going to be using these slide mandrels a lot today. These mandrels are cylindrical and they are different sizes. This is a number 12 and this is a number 9. And the reason I need two different sizes is because the inner side and the outer side are a different diameter. This is the number 9 mandrel and it fits on the inner side. And of course it, it will not go past the dent right now. The outer side is a lot larger so that is going to take the number 12 mandrel which is the second largest mandrel that I own and that will fit onto the outer side and of course that also goes up to the dent. These are two other tools I will be using a lot today. This is my rawhide mallet and you can see that it has been used a lot and it looks beat up. It's okay that it looks like this because the more you use it the better it gets. Kind of like a pair of shoes. And this tool is my dent hammer and this is the smallest dent hammer that I have and that's the one that you use on trombone slides. Even though this looks really small, anything larger than this would damage trombone slides. And I'll tell you more about that when I start to work on it. Another tool that I have, I do not know if I'll be using this one at all. This is for getting the dents out of trombone slides. And this tool is made by the Vota Tool Company. And I have never used one of these, and that may surprise some of you. You may be wondering why I have this tool if I've never used it. That's because I bought all the tools from a friend that used to repair instruments, and this was among the tools. The reason I've never used it is because the rawhide mallet and the dent hammer along with the mandrels have worked very well over the years. The way you use this tool is you take the mandrel and you put it into the slide and then you just take this tool and roll it back and forth over the slide. It's supposed to get dents out a lot easier but I'm a little uncomfortable using it because to me it just does not seem like it would get dents out the right way but people have assured me that it does work and it is a lot easier to use. I would think that this tool would work very well if the mandrel and the slide tubes were about the exact same size. Since there is some gap between the mandrel and the slide tube, it does wiggle around a bit in there. I would think that this tool would tend to squish the slide tube. If any of you have had experience using this tool, leave a comment in the comment section and also be sure to read those comments and see what other people have to say about this. And maybe I will even use it on this trombone, but for right now I'm going to use the rawhide mallet and the dent hammer like I've always done. Right now I'm going to get started working and take those dents out. I have the larger banjo for the outer slide tube, so I'm putting that on there. There's the dent. Now this dent has gotten a lot smaller since I had to partially get the dent out to remove the slides, and I did that in the last video. So... It does fit on there a little bit. I need to know how far the mandrel is on here. Okay, it's up to here. So it is past the dent. So it is okay to tap on this dent now. So what I use first is the rawhide mallet to start to tap down the dents. So what I'm going to do is find the where the dents start. And I also keep my hands like this because that will guide the hammer. And I know I'm probably not going to hit my hands. And then I'm going to move it a little bit. I do not need to get the dents out all the way with this hammer. This just starts to get them out. So I'm just going to tap this all the way around. Okay, now I'm going to see if this goes on any farther. Yeah, it went on a little bit farther, but not much. Okay, I'm just going to keep tapping. Another problem that could occur, since this is bent, when I straighten that out, it could try to transfer the bends to the other side and push that in. So I'm looking on the other side to make sure that it does not happen. And there probably is some stress on that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start tapping it with the metal hammer. Even though the metal hammer is very small and light, it is steel and there is a steel mandrel inside of here too. So what you have is you have steel and steel 
with a layer of very thin brass in between it. Even though this hammer is not very heavy, it does smooth out the dents. The hammer pushes down the high spots on the dents, and where there's a low spot, the mandrel pushes that up. So it works to smooth this out. You also have to be careful not to tap too hard with this hammer because that can cause bumps in the slide. It will make the slide very hard to repair later and also the slide will just not feel right to the player. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start tapping. Let's see, I need to figure out where to start. I'm going to start over here. And I'm tapping very lightly. This is making a hollow sound, so what I know from that is I'm tapping on a high spot. So the metal, the brass in between the hammer and the mandrel is not touching. There's a layer of air in between that. If it was brass in between the two steel objects with no air in between there, what would happen is it would make more of a ticking sound. This is making more of a hollow ticking sound. So I'm going to tap that down. So you can hear the difference there. When you're doing this job, it's a lot more important to have a lot of small taps instead of several big taps. So I'm probably, after the course of working on this trombone, I probably have tapped it maybe a few thousand times. But I'm not going to make you watch me tap it that many times. I'm going to give you a closer up view of this dent, and I know there's not a lot to see there. It's not really that exciting just to see a tiny little dent come out, but I'm just going to keep working on this. I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole thing because that would probably be too boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this for five minutes. I'll set the timer and I'll show you what it looks like five minutes from now. It's five minutes later and I've tapped it several hundred times in those five minutes and it is working it down very slowly. While I was tapping I thought about a couple things I should mention. When you tap it you just don't hit down on it. You do it at a kind of an angle or you use a circular motion and I'm going to put the camera in a different direction so you can see that. Now you're looking right down the slide and toward the showcase. I'm going to show you the motion that you use with a dent hammer and usually I would keep my hands around it like that but I'm not going to do that so you can see what it looks like. You do not tap straight up and down. It's more of a circular motion so that when you tap the metal it's not straight up and down but it comes around at an angle. That keeps you from hitting the metal too hard and damaging the slide tube. So this is what it looks like when I'm tapping. Another thing I was thinking about is before I started my shop, I had a job at another music store and the people there hated listening to me work on trombones because they heard the tap, tap, tap for a while and they would always say, it doesn't look like you're doing anything, you're just tapping all day long and you're not accomplishing anything. And I would assure them that yes, it actually is getting the dents out. It happens slowly, but it does happen. But they still did not like when I worked on trombones, though. So this is what the dent looks like now. I'm going to turn the camera off for five more minutes and tap some more, and I will see you in five minutes. It's been five minutes already. It seemed like about two minutes to me. I know for you, because the camera was off, it didn't seem like anything. But time flew by when I was working on this. I probably tapped it another, I don't know, five, six, seven hundred times. And this is what I have now. I'm going to back the camera up a little bit. And you can see that this is turning a lot easier now. Before I had to really work to get this slide to turn. But now it's turning easier. I'm going to see if it slides on farther. Yeah, look at that. It's going on all the way to the slide mandrel now. You can see the slide mandrel on the other side. So since it's going to do that, I'm going to push it on all the way like that and then work on it with the mandrel on farther. The dent is a lot better than it was. It's still not good at all though. You might be wondering if I'm going to use anything other than this hammer and the answer is yes. Uh, right now I'm using this because it smooths out the rough dents, the really sharp dents that are at an angle. This tool works very well on. You can see that where the dent was very sharp, it's smoothed out and you can hardly even see the dent. It's still there and there are a lot of problems, but visually you cannot see it very well anymore. 
and that is a good thing, but the ultimate test is how well does it work when you put it on the inner slide tube, does it slide back and forth well like it's supposed to? And the answer right now would be no, it would still work very poorly, but it would work better than it did. So I think I'm going to keep tapping it with a dent hammer for another five minutes. And after that five minutes, it probably should be to the point where I don't need to use the dent hammer anymore. So I'm going to turn the camera off and I'll turn it on in another five minutes. Time flew by again. It seemed like only two minutes, but it was five minutes. So there's the dent and visually it looks very good. Now the slide is still very much bent. If I pull it back and forth, it will go back and forth, but I'm pulling pretty hard. It definitely would not work well on a trombone slide. So I'm going to pull that off. See, then when I got past the dent, it slid right off. Now I'm going to go to the inner slide. I switched the mandrel to the smaller size because the inside diameter of the inner slide tube is a lot smaller than the other one. You want to use the, let's see, you want to use the largest mandrel that will fit inside of the slide tube. So this dent you can see is a lot worse than the other one. Now the other dent did look worse than this, but now this one looks far worse. Something I need to be careful of on this dent is that the slide is chrome plated, so the chrome plating will probably crack a little bit. You can tell, I don't know if you can see that or not, there is a little bit of cracking right there already. I am going to lose some of the chrome plating, but I want to lose as little as possible. Another thing about this is that the dent is at pretty close to the end of the slide, and I would put it on the mandrel this direction, except for that there is a smaller portion of tubing inside of there. It's called a venturi, and it's kind of like a lead pipe on a trumpet. It small, gets smaller, and then it gets larger gradually. It's about this long on the trombone, so it goes from about here to here. And that keeps me from putting the mandrel in from that direction. Now I could pull the venturi out and then get in from that way if I needed to, but I probably will not need to. So I'm going to go in from this way. So I'm going to put this on the mandrel and get started. This mandrel obviously will not go very far past the dent, if at all. I'm going to get the magnet and see if it's making it past there at all. No. It is just going up to the dent and then stopping. I'm going to try to carefully put that on there a little past the dent. I may need to work uh, with a smaller mandrel to start with. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to pull out this mandrel and work with the next size smaller. I changed the, the mandrel and let's see if I can go past the dent. Yes, that one goes past the dent rather easily. I'm going to tap it with the rawhide mallet now. I'm not going to tap it very hard, not until I can get the larger mandrel in, but I'm going to tap it enough to try to get the other mandrel in there. Let's see if it will go past the dent now. Okay, yes it does. Not very far, but a little bit, and that's far enough. Now I'm going to tap it with a rawhide mallet. I need to be careful, since the mandrel only goes up to about here, if I were to hit over here, it could dent it. So I'm careful just to hit where the dent is. Okay, and I can feel it going in farther now. You may be wondering why I'm hitting it hard with a rawhide mallet, but not with the little dent hammer, and that's because this is not steel. Since the rawhide mallet is softer than the metal, you can hit it as hard as you want, and you're not going to damage it, as long as the mandrel is inside of the slide tube. But when there's brass in between steel and steel, it will do damage, so I can hit it hard with this one, but I do not want to hit it hard with the other one. Now I've smoothed the dents out a little bit, I think it's time to take out the dent hammer. I'm going to do this the same way as the other tube, so I'm going to turn off the camera and I'll be back in five minutes. It's been five more minutes and that's what the dent looks like. It looks a little bit better. Let's see. Yeah, I can slide it on a little bit farther than it was. This time I'm going to tap it for 10 minutes and then show you what it looks like. 
It's been 10 minutes and there's the dent. I did manage to get the side pushed all the way onto the mandrel, or at least as far as it could go before it hits the venturi. The dent looks a little better than it did. I know it's kind of hard to see in videos, especially on little dents like that. In those 10 minutes, I tapped this at least a thousand times. So I'm going to tap it some more. And I'm sorry that this video is just a whole bunch of tapping. I try to make it interesting even though it's tapping and you can't really see any change, or at least not very much change. Someone suggested that I do a video, I quicken it up. Instead of doing the series of eight or so videos, if I do just one video from start to finish, so I think on this one, after I finish, I'm going to re-edit the footage and I'm going to do a separate video of me repairing this trombone in one video. It will probably be like a five minute video of start to finish. And that is if this trombone works when it's done. Now I am not guaranteeing that this is going to work when it's done. I'm sure it will slide back and forth, but I'm not sure that it's going to work really well. We'll find out when it's done, how it works. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the mallet because with the mallet I can hit it a lot harder and there's some high spots still there and the dent hammer works really good at working on those creases but it does not work quite as well in the high spots. So I'm going to take the mallet and I'm going to hit this pretty hard and that will help to smooth it out some more. That looks a little better than it was. At least the high spots are down slightly. Still not good though. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap this with a dent hammer for another oh, 10 minutes. It's about 10 minutes later. There's the dent. And this is about as far as I can go with the mallet and the dent hammer. It does turn on the mandrel a little bit easier. I will probably come back to the mallet and the dent hammer later, but for right now I'm done with that. I think that is a full video for today. Just for fun, I want to see how this works. I know it's not going to work well, but... Hmm. Well, a lot better than it started, but still not good. You'd have a hard time playing a song on this. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos and look in the description below for links to related videos. Next week I'm going to try to get the slides working better. I do not know how well they are going to work after next week, but we will see.